Welcome to Sew Very Easy. My name is Laura and welcome to my new sewing space. So many of you have been looking forward to this because you did enjoy my last sewing room. So hopefully you'll enjoy my new space. I did take a lot of the things, matter of fact, almost everything from my last space and I did bring it down here. I reconfigured it and I was able to add some new things. So the first thing that I did in this space, it is in a basement, so we did have to do the walls and the floor, which gave me freedom of whatever I wanted. The floor, I did put a pattern that looks like stone, and that way when I had little threads running on the floor, you didn't really notice them that much. The other color was the wall color. I did use a very light dove gray, and the reason I used a gray is it doesn't reflect on your fabric. White sometimes is a little too bright and it doesn't show the fabric its true color. If you do a dark color like a blue or a pink or a red, the color from the wall can actually transfer to the fabric so you're not really seeing the true color. Gray is a neutral color so what you see is what you're seeing in your fabric. So that's why I chose the walls a nice light gray. This room is a nice big space. I am in a basement, but I have three fabulous windows that I get a lot of natural light. And just in case that wasn't enough light, we have a massive amount of lights in my ceiling. And that's going to give me a lot of light for filming so that hopefully we don't have as many shadows. So I'll give you a tour of my room. I'm gonna start in this area. I'm gonna swing all the way around until we come back. So when I come down the stairs, the first thing I have here is the second sewing machine I ever owned. And I owned this when I was probably in about grade six. It is a 1920 gray bar sewing machine. And yes, it still works, but it takes super big needles so the needles are hard to find. I do have a couch here so that I'm able to sit down and enjoy some planning, do some hand sewing. And I do think I need to replace this couch because it's 37 years old and well, there's no springs left on that couch. In the room, you will notice that I have a lot of personal touches because they make me happy. And I also have a lot of memorabilia, things that I've had as a child. So it's just things that make me happy in my space. This is an area that I hope to have changed at some point. I think with all rooms, they do evolve as we evolve. I do have a serger here, and it sits on a little desk. The desk does have this fabulous drawer that has all of my all-purpose thread. So I can use this thread with my serger, but I can use it also for generally other sewing. And no, that's not all my thread. So you'll see that coming up. But I'm hoping to get a bigger workstation because I do like to do a lot of surging. So this is still going to be worked on. Whenever I have a machine or anything that needs some instructions, I like to keep the instructions close to the machine. And in this case, this is one of these file folders. I just attached it to the side of the wall of this desk. And I have the instruction manuals in here and anything that I think that I'm going to need to use my machine. So I find for myself, if they're out, I often will pull them out and refer to them. When we come to this little corner of the room, it is my office space. And I do a lot of designing sitting here. This is where I edit all my footage. This is where all of the brains of the matter sort of works. And if you notice, the desk is rather short. Well, it's short because I am short. The average desk is approximately six inches too tall for me, so I did make my own. This is a desktop that I took off of an old desk, and it sits on top of two filing cabinets. Now these filing cabinets were supposed to have wheels or feet on them, and as you can see, there is none. And that way, that made it low enough to the floor so that when I do sit in a chair, my feet touch the floor. So it does give me the comfort of sitting properly and not having to be uncomfortable or having a bad back when I'm done. Along the walls here, I'm still trying to work out what I want to do here. I do have some artwork from 
my children and from my grandchildren. And on this wall, you'll notice a big chart, and that's the color wheel and all my color wheel fun things. A color wheel is very important for choosing colors and seeing how things are going to go together. So from this side of the room, I'm able to look up at a glance and get a good idea on some colors that maybe I wouldn't think to put together. And while I'm sitting here, it's easy to handle. So this works as a great workspace for me. Under this window, I do have an antique Singer treadle sewing machine. And this used to belong to my mother-in-law. It is a 1913 Singer. And I did bring it back to life. So the only thing I'm missing is that belt. But it's a nice place for me to have some plants. On the opposite side of my desk, I do have my quilting machine. I do my sit-down quilting on this Q20. And as you can see, it is a lot higher than what my desk was, which meant I had to have a chair with a lot of pillows to put me in that proper spot so that I can sit properly and be comfortable. In this wall here, I do have a body double, and it is my body double. So I'm able to use that as I'm designing my clothing. I will just bring it over to my regular cutting station. And this happens to be a dress I made for my son's wedding. And when I am sitting and doing some quilting, we often need tools if we're using rulers or we need to remove pins. So I have a little rolly cart. And this little cart, I have a little bag for my garbage and I have all the things that I'm going to need to do that quilting project. And if I need more, I can pull it in. And if I'm not going to need them, I can pull them out and keep this free. And that way, the stuff that I'm using will not sit on top of my counter. I do not want to take a chance of running them over as I'm quilting. So I do keep them out of the way. And when I'm done, it goes out of the way. Then we continue around right to this corner. And this corner is where I do all of my sewing. And it is even higher. So I've gone from low to high to really high. The reason this is so high is because I really needed these cupboards and these drawers to fit underneath. So what I did is I have a desk table, which would be a standard desk, and I've added this piece of wood on top. So my husband was nice enough to carve out this wood shape, and it is carved out to the top of my sewing machine. I did have to raise it, so this would be all the same level. And what I have used here to raise this with are PVC pipes. You can buy these in any hardware store. They are very, very strong, and it just happens to be the exact size needed. So I've put some little anti-slip pads here on both the top and the bottom, and it really is anchored in now. So I have a big flat surface and I can remove this cutting mat if I want to. This gave me a nice extra space here, which I do keep an extra pressing mat and another cutting board because a lot of times I will bring this to the side of my sewing machine, but it does fit quite nicely. Because this is really high, I did need to get a bar stool and the bar stool works perfect. Because it has a solid base, that base is not rolling. So once I'm set up in the machine and I'm sewing, the chair does not move. It keeps me in the exact position I need to be so I can sew for a long time. And this does not change position. Sometimes as we're sewing, as we're pushing, if we have wheels, we end up pushing that chair out and then we're at a really bad angle at the sewing machine. We don't realize we've done it, but with the pushing of our hands, we've pushed our back back. So this, once I'm here, it stays put so I can sew for hours and not worry about it. Because this is a bar stool, I did need to put some protection on my floor. And I did use an old cutting mat. I was able to use this cutting mat on the floor 
because, well, I can't use it on my counter anymore. It had a little fight with the iron. And you know, heat and mats do not get along, so it did warp in this corner. So I wasn't able to use it on my counter anymore. But it works great on the floor. And I like the look of it. When we move up along this side, I do have all of the things handy that I need. All of the drawers with all of those notions that we need as we're sewing. But I also have some that are right beside. And I do find the ones that I use a lot, I'll just leave this open. And this little tray is for those coffee pods. And I've just reworked it for my sewing room. I did a video on this where I covered it with velvet and my feet fit inside here. It closes up and I still have that extra counter on the top. So I have my thread little catcher, pins and needles, and in this box I got a little carried away and made a great container for my sewing needles. I do use a lot of different sewing needles depending on the sewing, and this fits them all. I was able to find these two mannequins. Now these mannequins are designed to hang jewelry on. I found one at a clearance house, and the other one I found at a secondhand store. I was quite happy that they matched, and I just decorated them with some real buttons. This is a great thing for my scissors and anything that needs to hang up, like my cutters and it looks nice at the same time. And when we move up, we do have some more thread. And I do have these in little areas. So this would be my 100% cotton thread. This is a general all-purpose thread. Some cottons are in there, some polyesters. And this thread is my glide thread that I do like to use as I'm quilting. So that sort of is related to that item. And here is some very thin thread that I like to use for piecing with. So I have all of my thread here. And yes, I know I'm short and I can't reach the top of that, but this works very good. I can just pull this down, put it on the counter, choose what I need, and it goes right back. So I don't have to get a stool to climb up. I do have another body double, well, because sometimes I'm working on two projects at the same time. So here I have the shelving unit that holds most of my supplies. And I do have it crammed with my fabric. I do like to keep my fabric together by companies. There is an option that we can store them by colors. But in my case, I did store them by fabric companies because the fabric companies have a tendency to match their colors already for you so that one line will match a second line. So it sort of already helps me choose those colors by keeping the same lines together. Another thing to do inside of your bookcases when you do store your fabric is to store your books in between your fabrics. I have all of this fabric here, but right in the corner there's often little spaces, just enough for little books. So I have books put in one area, little books in another area, and having those books shoved into little places means you don't have to have a separate shelf for them. I've actually cleaned off one entire shelf of books just by putting them in between little places. And I do often associate those books with what I'm going to do in those areas. So it's a great way to store your books. I like to have my tape measures left out flat, hanging, so that they do not have that roll in them. We buy them and they're rolled up or they're bundled up. And then they sort of have this little crinkle as we're sewing. So I do keep them hung up like this and that way the wrinkles fall out and they're always straight for me. I don't have to worry about smoothing them. They're already smooth and gravity enough will make those straight for you after a while. This is what you see 
when I am filming. So I will be standing here in front of a cutting mat and this is what you're seeing behind me. This unit was designed for a TV, so a big screen TV is supposed to fit in there, but I think a quilt is quite fine in there. When we move to the other side, I do have more fabric. The one side was more of quilting fabric, this is more garment construction or projects that I'm working on and notions. Projects that I am working on, projects that I want to get back to, and garment fabrics. And there's some more books stuck inside in between little areas. I do have a lot of little notions that I like to sew with and this is what I put them in. This is just one of those little carousels for the coffee pods. They fit two ounce shot glasses and you can get these in all sorts of colors and they fit right inside. So now I have my chalk and a lot of little things right handy right here where I need them. This is my newest sewing machine. It's a toy sewing machine, which I like to collect little machines. So then I'm over here and I'm going to have the camera come over here so you can see this section and this angle. So this is my area where I'm going to do most of my work. I do have my cutting station here and as you can see, it is quite high. And even though I'm short, it is important that I have it high because I'm standing here and I want the cutting mat to be at a good angle of my arm. And that way, I'm not having my shoulders up as I'm doing any work. The counter is up, so I'm not having to go up. So I'm going to be able to do lots of cutting and I stand here and cut for a long time. I have the rulers that I use most often always out. I did have to raise this in order to give me that proper height, but that gave me a little space in here and I do not want not one space to be wasted. So I use it to store projects that I'm working on. So it does work like a drawer. And you'll often see me use these boards and I'll put my projects on them and I can take this from my cutting table to my sewing machine to my ironing station and I can take them anywhere. So it's a tray and they're just pieces of canvas that I covered with a flannel. So you can use it as the tray with the little lip on it or you can choose them flat and I keep them stored here. If there's a flat surface I am sure to use it. I do keep my larger rulers hanging up right here. And this just is a tray that can come and go as needed. Lots of supplies that I can go. When we come over to my ironing. The ironing is a little bit different because I do have a lot of irons. I often sew for eight to 10 hours and that means my iron is on for eight to 10 hours. A standard iron doesn't stay on long enough for me and they have a tendency to burn out. So I do have an industrial so I can leave this on for 10 to 12 hours and it doesn't give me any problems. It also has a large water reservoir so I always have steam and it never turns off so the iron is always hot. But once I'm finished doing my major pressing I don't necessarily need the larger heat of the iron. So I do have my regular iron that I use and I have a little travel iron. Once I finish making a project or as I'm sewing my little pieces together, I don't need the heavy heat of the big irons because the fabric has already been pressed. I just need to set those seams in one direction or another and a little travel iron works perfect. It's not too heavy and it doesn't stretch those seams. So I keep my seams very precise. When I come over to here, I do have a very large wool mat and this is where I do all of my pressing. So the mat just sits on top of this countertop 
And I do have some storage underneath there. This cutting station is just this countertop that is sitting on the desk. And it's not attached. It's free moving, so I can move that wherever I want. And the reason is, if I need to press for a long time, I can put my stool down and I can just take this and pull it to me. So now I'm sitting right at a counter where I'm going to be able to press for a long time and not have it to be bent over. And it can go back to where it needs to be. This dresser does hold a lot of my extra pressing supplies, which is really handy. Some very long rulers, extra patterns, and even more patterns. So it's a big dresser, strong enough to hold this cutting mat. This cutting mat also is not attached so I do have a space along this back. The reason is a lot of times when I have a large amount of fabric, I need to have all of that space. So my fabric cascades down and then as I pull it to me to iron, it stays free along the back. So I do like to have this space. And I do have two walls, which means I do have some extra rulers attached onto those walls. Every space of real estate is important. On the other side of my cabinet, I do have a jewelry box. If you can get your hands on one of these, they are great for the sewing room. There's lots of little areas and little compartments for all those little notions that we like to keep. Some bigger drawers for some bigger things. And on the side where you would open this up and hang up your necklaces, it works great for zippers. And it doesn't take up much room and it's nice and tall. You can get a lot in these little boxes. On the other side of the wall, I do have a sewing machine. This is a 1954 Singer. It is a hand crank and it doesn't have a bobbin. It has this shuttle that goes back and forth. The desk that it's sitting on does not belong with this machine, but this desk was my very first sewing machine. I do not have the sewing machine anymore, but this was my very first sewing machine and its desk. So yes, I did have a treadle as my very first sewing machine. It probably was about 10 years old and my neighbor gave it to me. I do wish I kept the sewing machine, but I did take that machine off and I used it for years to put on just a regular machine as I got to sew. When we come over here, I do have a big walk-in closet that stores things well that I just can't fit anywhere else. And that gave me this big wall that I'm going to be able to turn into a design wall. So you can look forward to that in a video. I haven't had a chance to get to that yet. In this area, I do have another area where I can do some hand sewing. Comfortable chair and an ottoman. Now, you'll notice in this room I did have a couch and a chair, but no coffee table. I cannot have a coffee table because I need the freedom of the tripod moving back and forth. So I've sort of invented a movable coffee table. And I can use the stool as a coffee table if I put a tray on it. And it's very easy to move wherever I need it to go. I also have this antique sewing box. I have raised the feet. The reason I've raised the feet is because it will fit really great when I'm sitting on a couch. So I can just move this wherever I need. And now with it raised, I can open this area. I can put my coffee here and still work on it. Or do it this way. Having this raised up, 
has given me my coffee table and my sewing station at the same time. So if you have one of these, you might want to consider raising the legs. And that way we're not bending so low to get what we need inside. I can move it wherever I want. So we're coming back to the front of what you would normally see me standing in front of. We have the cutting table, which I do like to keep clean. So I did have to have another counter where I can put things that I'm working on that the camera does not necessarily need to see because it does look really messy. So I like to keep this surface clean. So this just gives me another surface to put stuff on. So in the front here, I do have all of these little totes. These totes hold projects projects that I'm working on, that I'm still collecting things that need to go with the projects, projects that I'm ready to film, and projects that I'm thinking on. I did raise that counter, and if you look really close, you'll see what I raised it with. Your spools of thread are very, very strong, and because you get so many in different sizes, you'll be surprised you might find one that fits to raise certain surfaces. And on the bottom of this unit, I did raise it off of the floor because I do like to stand here and I need to have an area to have my toes. So I raised it once again with these PVC pipes. So I have the pipes underneath, gives me the exact amount I need so that I'm not kicking my toes. So this is the front. We come to the side. I have that same sort of square unit. Once again, I do have that empty spool of thread that gave me that proper height. And I do have more projects that I'm working on. So this is my new sewing space. It did take me a long time to figure things out, rearrange things until I came up with something comfortable that worked for me. So if you're working on a space, sometimes you will need to rearrange it. What you put on paper might not necessarily work when you have it in the space. So having these things that are separate, not attached together, means you have more opportunity to switch things around. And raising things with PVC piping, empty spools of thread, really puts that space up just a little bit that we might need. So this room will probably evolve as I evolve. And if you have space, it's nice to have this memorabilia around. It's not something we're necessarily going to want in our living room, but it sure can come into our own personal space. Having the proper height of chairs and the proper height of a counter is very important. Keep that in mind as you're designing it. We want to have our body straight so that our elbows are on a nice 45 degree angle. Even when we're sitting, we want that 45 degree angle. So if you need to put platforms underneath in order to get that, it will make it a lot more enjoyable and you're going to be able to spend a lot more time in your sewing room. Now I've not always had a large space like this. My first spot when I was about 10 years old I sewed in a closet. My machine fit into my closet. I moved my clothes in order for me to sew. From there I took and I had my nightstand was a sewing machine. So for me to sew, I had to clear off my nightstand and I used my bed as a cutting table. From there, I went into hallways and closets and small front porches. So it's amazing if you really look, you can find a little space exactly what you are needing. We don't necessarily need a big space like this, but having a machine always set up, even if we to move those clothing just off to the side, will make us want to sew more and make it enjoyable to be able to have that space. 
So I'd like to take time and thank you for watching my videos and joining me today in my sewing room tour. Even though you can't be here in person, I do appreciate you taking the time to spend it with me. And as always, thank you for joining me today on Sew Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're talking about next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.